Welcome back. If you're just now joining us, we've been sitting down with local health and school officials to discuss Columbia Public Schools' plans in place to safely return students back to classrooms full time. Now, Dr. Peter Stiepelman, we'll start with you. What is the plan in place for CPS schools to comply with social distancing and enforcing face masks under the current county health order? Right. So, you know, our plan was written in June and or at least was presented to the board in June and so has always addressed masks. You know, initially we held a webinar with our families and more than 300 families sort of gave us their feedback on whether or not it was appropriate for us just to say that they were expected and so then we moved it to uh, that they were required. And so that has been an important part of our return in terms of our phase in to begin right after spring break on April 5th. You know, mitigation strategies are super important when you're considering a pandemic and masks are one important part of that. And what we do know is that masks work, whether it's a study out of Wisconsin, North Carolina, Mississippi, Georgia last week, there's supposed to be one coming in from Utah and then one from Missouri. So they looked at three districts in the St. Louis area, three in the Springfield area, and what they determined was masks work. And so the fact that Director Browning, who I knew well, kind of before the pandemic and now is sort of my best friend because I talk to her probably every <laughs> sure. day. Um, and we have a Thursday call with her every Thursday with all the Boone County superintendents. Uh, we know that masks work and we'll continue to apply them as part of our, uh, our return plan. Sure. And, and, and Dr. Peter Subelman, as far as social distancing is concerned, how will that be uh, done within all the buildings? Yeah, so that's an important distinction. When we were in a two day hybrid for middle school and high school, uh, social distancing, a three foot that is, was recommended by the WHO and the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics was possible in most of those classrooms. Unfortunately, that won't be possible when we return, which makes hygiene, contact tracing, um, uh, constant cleaning, not deep cleaning. What we learned from Christelle Ilbudo, Dr. Ilbudo is an mm -hmm. infectious disease doctor uh, at the University of Missouri and is also a resource for the entire state, uh, indicated to us that that's no longer necessary, that even the hospitals themselves are not cleaning every hour as they once had been. So um, what we know is that masks work. And so the compliance with masks and the leadership of the health department to keep that as part of the health order is super important for us to be able to stay, not just return in terms of our phase in, but to be able to stay in uh, because we know that they work. Okay, and Sarah, this is a follow-up for you. Um, what will the health department's role be in making sure the district is complying with all the, the mandates? So we're here as a resource for not only Columbia Public Schools, but also any other school in Boone County. And so we're here as a resource to answer questions and be as helpful as we can be. Um, you know, those decisions are up to the school districts themselves, but we are here to be as helpful as we can be. I can give you an example if you'd like. Yes. So one example would be that our team recently met with the entire team over at the health department to look at everything from graduations to proms to field days to those end of the school year events. And so together with the health department's guidance, uh, we've been dev devising and working on our plans to try to be able to replicate what is done in a typical year, mm -hmm. sure. um, although recognizing and respecting the fact that we're still at the tail end of a global pandemic. And Sarah, to be clear, will anyone from the health department be actively going to the schools to make sure they're all following the health order? No, so we're here as a resource for them. Um, you know, we occasionally get um, things like complaints from folks, which then we, you know, anytime, no matter what the business is or organization is, we follow up with them to make sure that they uh, are aware of what the health order is and we advise them uh, going forward. But we're here as a resource for them. I'm surprised you get any complaints. That's really remarkable. I mean, people only call me to say you're doing a bang up job. So, Sarah, if you need some advice, I'm happy to provide. Well, whatever the case, we will continue uh, this discussion with Dr. Peter Stiepelman and Sarah Hum after this break. And welcome back. If you're just now joining us, we are speaking with local health officials and school officials on changes in Missouri's vaccine rollout and what the return of classrooms may look like for Columbia Public Schools. We're going to turn our discussion now to tomorrow's mass vaccination event in Columbia. Sarah, Hum, how many people are signed up and what should people expect to see around the sports field house in South Columbia? Yeah, so tomorrow we will have about uh, 2,300 doses available. Uh, last we looked this afternoon, there were still some spots open. So if folks are in eligible tiers, we encourage them to go get signed up on the vaccine navigator. Um, and we're ready for tomorrow. We have quite a few folks helping us out with this effort. We'll have about 35 members of the National Guard there, about 24 nurses from uh, 
our staff, volunteers, the uh, MU Nursing School and MU Healthcare, 15 AmeriCorps members, and then other members of our staff. So uh, we're ready to go for tomorrow to get folks vaccinated. And really quickly, just to clarify, if people wanted to get one of those final slots, where could they go to sign up? How's it chosen? Yeah, so they can go to the vaccine navigator through the state okay. site um, to get one of those spots. There's um, uh, also a phone number available on their website. Great. Okay, good to know. And Dr. Stiepelman, you mentioned something a couple minutes ago, and I'm sure a lot of parents want to know, commencement. What is that looking like? We know MU announced they're going to start having theirs. What is CPS is going to look like? Yeah, I was hoping that people stayed tuned, yes. right? that they were like, oh, I want to, <laughs> I'll, I'll wade through this commercial for that information. So uh, what we're excited about, obviously, you know, we started our time together talking about the vaccine and the fact that, you know, most of our employees at, at by spring break and certainly after will have had at least their first shot. And that's really exciting. And so we were able to start looking towards the spring uh, and May and what a graduation might look like. And so uh, we are right now very excited about the fact that we're walking hand in hand with the health department and the University of Missouri to be able to offer in-person um, graduations. So that's not just one graduation. It'll be similar, likely, to what the university is doing in terms of multiple graduation ceremonies. Last year, we did 13. So we would like to do a half as many, um, but it's going to be great. So we're working right now on that planning and we'll be communicating that very soon. Lots of parents are going to be very happy about that. Mm -hmm. Just yes. to be clear, any days or times picked out that you know of? Yeah, I mean, so our calendar already has sure. uh, those those graduations scheduled. So there's a Friday, Saturday and Sunday, Friday and Saturday. And so um, it will be that that same weekend uh, towards the end of it, like May 21st, something like that. Uh, and so I should know since I have a graduating senior, I should probably pay attention to when he's graduating. Um, but I will say that we're excited about having the ability to do in person uh, graduations and I should pluralize it because it's not every class will be all together uh, but certainly far fewer than we had to do last year. Sure. Dr. Stiepelman, thank you so much for joining us tonight and Sarah Hum, thank you for also joining us tonight. It really helps our viewers understand how everything is working so far. We appreciate it. What a great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And coming up Thanks tonight, Columbia me. Public Schools next superintendent is underway. We'll bring you the biggest takeaways from tonight's candidate forum and where finalists stand on those big issues. That's all coming up tonight at 10. We'll see you then.